All right, thanks, Joey. Well, time now for a check of our top stories. We start with the latest in Ukraine. That's as the war in Ukraine has intensified overnight into Tuesday along the front lines and along the border. Attacks by Russian troops are no more frequent and more deadly. And as the shellings continue, the humanitarian crisis along the border is reaching a frightening level. Close to 2 million people have now poured into neighboring countries, and millions more are likely on the way. Jay Gray has a look at the situation. We now know most all of the Russian troops and war machines lining the Ukraine border are in country and fully engaged in the fight. Many now beginning to close in on the capital city of Kyiv. Towns and villages along the way left in ruins. The relentless attacks at times clearly targeting civilians. We're here because of the war crimes that are being committed. Foreign fighters continue to travel into Ukraine. To stand alongside thousands of civilians, many just learning how to fire the weapons they'll carry to the front line. As the fighting intensifies, so does the push by so many to escape. 1.7 million have left Ukraine. UNICEF saying a million of those refugees are children. I hear a loud uh, voice from bombs. Rushing from her home during intense shelling. But I don't know where my friends now. Ten-year-old Anna Maria left her friends, toys, and life in Kharkiv. A heart is, it's like a piece of your heart. I don't know where we, how we just uh, Google uh, tried to help me and that's all. Not sure of where she is and like so many here, unsure of where she's going. Jay Gray, NBC News, along the Poland-Ukraine border. And switching gears now to the latest on the coronavirus front in Puerto Rico. Well, Governor Pedro Perluisi on Monday lifted the territory's mask mandate and most of Puerto Rico's COVID-related mandates. This all comes as the number of hospitalizations and cases there continue to fall. Our Francis Felix reports. Governor Pedro Pierluisi announced some series of changes in the measures imposed for the COVID-19, including the elimination of the use of a mask in indoor and outdoor places with some exceptions. The new measure will go in into effect on Thursday and face masks will still be required in health facilities, nursing homes, labs and pharmacies. In addition, domestic travelers will no longer have to present proof of vaccination, a negative COVID test or fill out a currently required form. Governor Pedro Pierluisi also will leave all capacity restrictions at public and private businesses and say proof of vaccination to enter will no longer be required. As students in the public system who were limited from taking face-to-face -face classes because they were not vaccinated against COVID-19 will be able to attend classrooms without complications. In addition, the use of masks will no longer be mandatory in classrooms where there is good ventilation. The screening requirement for vaccination status or testing in public and private establishments, such as restaurants, among others, is eliminated. Each operator of such establishment will decide the measures they understand necessary. We ask some citizens their opinion about the elimination of masks and flexibilization of these measures. What is your opinion about the elimination of the use of masks? I think that we just have to be careful and uh you know, uh, it, we need to move and progress into not wearing a mask, but, you know, uh, we just need to make sure that we do it intelligently and then it's well done. I'm not willing to do so. I believe that it's too soon and we are uh, in a risk of uh, acquiring COVID once again. I am actually happy that the, the mandates are finally taken down because uh, at this point many people are vaccinated. I think the percentage is very high. So it's time to be able to take them off, at least in most places, if it's, if it's possible. And I also believe that it's more healthy for the children to be without masks most of the time, not to be um, wearing them many, many hours. And then I also think about taking down the masks. I think it's actually going to be quite a relief because it's been two years of COVID. And uh, we still are wearing these masks. 
and I found it and I find it pretty unhealthy that we constantly are wearing these masks. I totally not agree because uh, I was still in danger. This uh, pandemic is still in the in the in, in everything. So I'm not, I, I don't agree with the rule of eliminating the mask. All the vaccination mandates will pass to the health jurisdiction. The executive orders on this mandate will be without effect and will be the Department of Health that will establish some guidelines with an executive order. From Condado, Puerto Rico, Frances Felix. All right, thanks so much, Francis. In the meantime, the global death toll for COVID-19 reached 6 million on Monday. That's according to John Hopkins University. It comes four months after the world reached 5 million deaths. Now, the U.S. reported the highest number of deaths with more than 958,000. That's followed by Brazil, Russia, and Mexico. Experts say based on CDC data, the U.S. may be in for a near normal spring and summer and say the move from pandemic to endemic appears to be accelerating. In the meantime, COVID-19 restrictions will be relaxed in Trinidad and Tobago starting on Monday. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley announced the adjustment saying that the Twin Island Republic is well into the stage of living with COVID-19 and is preparing to move from the acute phase to the pandemic into the endemic phase. He said that in keeping with the general principles and on the advice of the public health care professionals, government is now aiming to transition from population level controls to individual level responsibility. And as a result, public transport will be allowed to return to 100% capacity. Restrictions on the length of time and capacity at religious places of worship, as well as the number of people permitted at graveside funeral services have been removed. Public gatherings of people in groups of no more than 25 are now permissible and team and contact sports are allowed. Work and school will also resume as normal. Provided that we do not have dangerous changes in the COVID-19 position, we will permit all children to return to physical schooling in term three. The Ministry of Education will continue to put out the necessary guidelines to safely manage this process. As of Monday, 7th March 2022, the public service will return to full service and all public servants will be expected to return to work as normal. Now, quarantine periods have also been shortened. The national quarantine time for contacts of positive cases has now been reduced from 14 to 10 days. For unvaccinated nationals returning to Trinidad and Tobago, a reduction in the quarantine time would be applicable. Quarantine time will be reduced from 14 days to seven days with discharge taking place on the receipt of a negative PCR test on the seventh day. 